So the U.S. 2024 presidential election scenarios, things are scrambling very quickly here, Peter. We had this, uh, of course, recent string of events where we're seeing from uh, Trump essentially his odds peaking with the assassination attempt. And then suddenly Biden resigns, Harris takes over, and then with this VP nomination of uh, Tim Waltz, she seems to be at a new high. So, of course, things can mean revert, but right now we've really seen a scrambling in the scenarios. This has happened at a time with a lot of market volatility. Is this, uh, is this market volatility in any way linked, partially at all, to the, uh, the U.S. presidential election cycle here? I don't think it is. Um, you, potentially, and this is a hypothesis that is very difficult to test, but there could be something around the contours of uh, a strong momentum we have seen in U.S. small caps, because we know from what Trump has said in, in terms of policy, he wants to do uh, tariffs, quite steep tariffs. He wants to be more protectionist, uh, protectionistic about the U.S. economy, and that is potentially a good thing for, uh, for U.S. small caps. So there could be something around that, but otherwise it's murky when it gets involved in, 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 you know, in, the, in, in the heated volatility around you know, carry trades in Japan, etc. So, but it's, I would say, John, from the last time we spoke, <laughs> a lot of things have yeah, changed, and I think sure. that one of the key points we need to hammer in here is that there's a lot of momentum on the Democratic side yeah. on, on Harris. We see that in the average polls. We also see it in the prediction markets from Predicted, where especially after the nomination uh, for vice president um, uh, of, uh, of Walls, that prediction markets are really now favoring uh, Harris. I think there's a nine percentage point difference now in the win probability between Trump and Harris. Yes, we can't know what happens until election day, but we have to pull out maybe two scenarios. I think it's worth really sort of yeah. concentrating on two scenarios right now. Trump gets a narrow victory, but ironically a narrow victory for Trump means you have full policy range because of the way the electoral system works and because of the Senate map this year, a very specific situation. If Trump wins, basically he gets Congress too. That means the policy impulse is far stronger. Yeah. So that's the one scenario. The other scenario is, I think most likely, if Harris wins, it will not be by enough to get that very Republican slanted Senate. So we have gridlock. So Trump policy uh, carte blanche versus Harris, uh, you could say gridlock. Yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts on those two scenarios? Yeah, so if it's the gridlock scenario with Harris, it probably increases the probability of a recession next year because there's a lot of stimulus programs on the fiscal side in the U.S. that needs to be extended. And that can be very difficult in that type of environment. Um, if Harris wins, on the positive side, if we set aside the economic outlook, uh, you know, renewable energy, uh, infrastructure to some extent, uh, technology as well, I think, will, will do quite well because the opposite scenario you're talking about with Trump and tariffs, could really have a negative impact on, on U.S. companies with very deep and long supply chains into a lot of countries because of very steep tariffs. But on the other hand, it could be good for real estate, it could be good for small caps, it could be good for financials. I mean, I think Trump is hammering in the point he wants to do deregulation. Mm. So I think those are some of the key things to think about uh, if for your portfolio, uh, depending on who wins the election. And arguably, again, the policy impulse is far stronger under the Trump scenario than it is obviously under, under a gridlock yes. scenario. Maybe down the line we'll have to consider a clean sweep by Harris scenario that's not, that's not on our radar uh, right now. Finally, as a final comment on the Trump scenario, this, this uh, executive action on tariffs because he does have, with the excuse of a national security issue, to do any tariffs he wants. That's why it's not just the uh, control of Congress, but that very specific issue that means that the Trump scenario has this sort of more drama around it, black and white drama around it, uh, on the outcome side. I think it's the key policy point where there's a big difference between the two scenarios. And then we need to, again, re, re, uh, restate the, uh, the, the thing where we said about Trump when we talked last time, and that is that in the case Trump gets elected, European defense stocks are probably one of the, th the strongest themes we can come up with that mm. will really do well because he really wants to change the whole narrative around the, uh, the war in Ukraine and his, uh, his, his stance on NATO just changes the whole equation for Europe. So that's also something really to consider, I think. Yeah, a lot of things to consider in the final uh, weeks and a couple months here until Election Day. Stay tuned for more updates, of course, uh, from us here at Saxo.